So I finally decided to pull the trigger and get a 4K monitor for my desk setup. And while my last video for my minimal PS5 and Xbox Series X desk setup included a 4K monitor, I actually had this monitor first. There's a couple reasons why I'm not using this monitor in that setup, which I'll get into shortly, but I can say off the bat, this monitor is next level, over the top, and simply put, kind of above what I need it for. Now don't get me wrong, I've had an amazing experience with my TCL R646 and LG C2 OLED TVs, but those are TVs. Not that I haven't tried using one of those as a monitor, but I really wanted to bring 4K back into my desk setup. That's a little more reasonable. I did try the Inzone M9 monitor from Sony not so long ago, but I didn't end up keeping that for a couple reasons which I did go over in that video, but I've decided to try what looks like its bigger brother in looks, the Samsung Neo G8. This also marks my first 4K curved monitor experience as well, and with HDR, a whopping 240Hz refresh rate, and a whole lot for your gaming experience, there's a lot to unpack here. The thing is, it isn't perfect, but either way, welcome to my review of the Samsung Neo G8. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. On this channel, I cover tech, gaming, and a few things in between, so if you enjoy the video, leave a like or subscribe, and if you don't, you're gonna feel like you need to sneeze but can't. But jumping into unboxing, it's pretty standard, but inside you've got the monitor itself, which is a lot thicker and heavier than I thought it'd be. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad sign, but there's also a power brick alongside a display port cable, as well as a USB-A to B cable for the USB hub functionality. What's missing though is an HDMI cable, unfortunately. I feel like that should be included for a monitor of this price point. The stand itself is also super chunky but solid. I had no idea what this black metal thing is, but soon realized it's an adapter for if you do want to base and mount this monitor. And lastly is the big ass stand, which rounds up this monitor to be super large and super thick. And as mentioned, this monitor is super heavy. So if you're planning on using a base amount, make sure it can hold up to 25 pounds for the weight and cables. In terms of inputs though, you do have two USB-A ports for hub usage. Most newer monitors do include some sort of USB hub, which is nice. You've got DisplayPort and two HDMI 2.1 ports which is perfect for the new generation of consoles. For my setup unfortunately I didn't have a monitor arm that could hold the weight of this so I could not base and mount it which is why I didn't have it in my last video's desk setup. So I ended up deciding to test this with my PC setup in my office and still pair it with my PlayStation 5. And there's just so much to love here about the design and build of this monitor. It truly is a premium built product. Aesthetically it's the next best thing after the end zone line to match your PlayStation 5 if you do care about that but the front end is all black which lets it fit into just about any setup. The display itself does have a 1000 R curve, which is actually the most curved display I think I've used. I didn't think I'd actually like this as it isn't an ultra one, but I did end up enjoying it, especially while gaming. As a 32 inch panel, I think this is the smallest I'd ever go as well for a 4K monitor. And after getting used to this, it's a little bit weird going back to my Apple Studio display for creative work, which is only 27 inches. One glaring thing I despise though after using this for a bit is actually the overall size, particularly the stand. For me, it is a bit of an issue when PC gaming since I play on low sensitivity with my mouse and I end up throwing my hand around a lot to pop off sick headshots in bronze, but my mouse always clips the stem of the stand. I could adjust my sensitivity and the way I play, but for me that's a bit of an inconvenience and I'd rather have a smaller stand or again throw it up on a VESA arm if you can. Using this stand, it does put the screen almost a whole foot from the back of my desk, making it so I'm kind of uncomfortably close to the display. I guess that also sort of depends on how deep your desk goes. Apart from that, the cable management solution is mediocre at best. This little rubber snap flap thing doesn't do the job that well, and it always randomly pops out by itself. It would have been nice to have a cable trunk for cable management considering the stand is so thick. But despite what I hate about the stand, it has damn good rotation, swivel, and height adjustments. There's lots of adjustability here. If you do need a base arm, again, just make sure it can hold at least 25 pounds if you're accounting for the weight of the cables as well. I will mention there are RGB LEDs on the back end too, which can kind of be customized to just about any color, or it can sync to whatever's on your display using what they call core sync. The downside here is that it's super weak. Even in a dark room, it's not that noticeable, especially when comparing it to some of LG's offerings, which almost illuminate your entire wall. To jump into talking about the display itself and gaming, here's where it really shines. With 1196 local dimming zones, this is easily the best mini LED display I've ever used. The HDR capabilities are absolutely wild and games look beyond incredible. For a mini LED, blacks are really, really dark and colors still pop. For HDR, it's crazy this thing has a max brightness of 2000 nits, although I personally have no way of measuring that as somebody who doesn't nitpick, pun intended. And again, with that, I kind of think this monitor is beyond my use case since I have no way of trying 
using its max refresh rate of 240 hertz, I'd likely have to have one of those massive 40 series GPUs from a PC to even try it out. This will easy future proof for 4K PC gaming at high refresh rates if you're lucky enough to have capable hardware. Still, gaming does look absolutely incredible for what I do have, and this is still one of the best displays I've ever used. This is probably the first time I felt really bad about my Xbox or PS5 only having a native 4K 30 FPS since this monitor has so much unused overhead. Still, playing God of War Ragnarok and Modern Warfare 2 has been an absolute blast, and I can say that PC gaming is obviously a good choice here. My wife and I still enjoy a lot of Overwatch on PC, which I actually can run at a native 4K high refresh rate, although I do have to turn down the effects to achieve that. And while I do love story-based games on my TV, I definitely have to try God of War on here, which again looks incredible. Primarily though, I will be playing shooters like Overwatch and Call of Duty on here, and for me, the curved display helps with immersion. And everyone has their preference when it comes to curved displays, I lean more towards actually liking them. And if you're trying to dive into the menu, it's actually pretty robust, from crosshairs to changing your black levels, checking your frame rate, there's plenty of gaming specific options in this menu, but the only thing I haven't yet figured out is how to get VRR to work on my PlayStation 5, as this monitor does indeed support variable refresh rate. But for this monitor, it doesn't just stop with gaming, multimedia content looks just as amazing on this display. One thing you'll need though is a set of speakers. While most monitors come with awful speakers, this one skips it entirely, which isn't the worst decision, you could always plug a good set of headphones in directly if you need to. But between Netflix and Disney Plus both having great HDR 4K content, personally this monitor does the job for me. And as mentioned, 32 inches is a perfect size for a monitor. I've done wacky stuff like trying my 55 inch TCL R646 as a monitor for a while. That actually worked okay, but I feel like 32 is the Goldilocks size. And again, 27 inch sort of feels a little bit too small now. I do have my wireless mouse dongle and webcam hooked up to the USB hub on the monitor, which makes this the perfect solution for work and productivity. And for the monitor of this price, it's good that it's not just used for gaming. And if you ever felt like 32 inches was too big, the curved display here does wonders for that. And for productivity and editing, the overall package is an A+. But to round the whole thing up, it is a stellar monitor. For me, I'd still want a hefty monitor arm to reclaim some desk space, but if you've got a super deep desk or don't mind the size, this should be a non-issue. For me, again, in my use case, it's a tad overkill, since A, I don't have a PC GPU that can handle 4K at high refresh rates, and B, my game consoles also can't push out a 4K at 240 Hz. As a console gamer and a creator, I could easily choose a cheaper option. Spoiler, I already have, and that's a review for another day. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Do you think this is overkill or is there something better out there that I should be trying out next? If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.